So when do I love keto, right? I'm just trying, I know I'm going kind of quick, but man, these things go by quick. So I first learned about keto when my niece was in the hospital, right, with her seizure disorder, KCNQ2. That's when I learned about the ketogenic diet for the treatment of seizures. So I talked about this in a bunch of AMAs, I'm not gonna get into that. This is exactly how I see the ketogenic diet. A therapeutic modality. That's what I see the, the ketogenic diet being used for. It works incredibly well for neurological disorders. Now, most people don't know what KCNQ2 is, the terminal illness that my, that my niece deals with. So let's use other examples. Alzheimer's disease and cancer. The ketogenic diet is fantastic at improving symptoms of both of these issues. Alzheimer's, cancer, dementia, the list goes on and on, right? In the case of Alzheimer's, we can actually thank mild autophagy and apoptosis. Now, as we talked about in the fasting AMA, fasting facts, the protein restriction plays a critical role in the autophagy and apoptosis. Now, what people don't realize is Alzheimer's is actually a buildup of proteins in the brain. It's nasty old malfunctioning cells. As we know, amino acids make up proteins, proteins make up cells. The brain is literally filled with old protein gunk, okay? This protein is called amyloid beta protein. And this is widely documented. If you wanna look up amyloid beta protein, it's crazy, right? So one of the reasons for this, you might think it's an overconsumption of protein, but it's actually not. What it is, is it's glycation. So think of glycation for rust, like rust on a car, like rust in your cells, except it's not rust, it's sugar. So glycation, or in the case of Alzheimer's, you're talking about something called advanced glycation, is literally like sugar frosted cells. You have eaten so many carbohydrates and there's so much sugar in the system that the sugar binds to these cells, binds to proteins, and you have something called advanced glycation. Now what happens there is if you have these sugar molecules binding to these proteins, it makes the proteins sticky. And now they can gunk up and stick together. So you have this amyloid beta protein that's gunking up and sticking together in the brain and literally causing problems in the neurons in your brain, right? Memory shortages, all these things. It's really crazy. Now, fun side note is this glycation and advanced glycation is the reason for clogged arteries. It's not fat, it's just that you have a coating of sugar that makes everything sticky. It's horrible, literally. It's like rust, but instead of little red rust particles, think of sugar, right? That's advanced glycation. So it's a problem. So Alzheimer's is a problem of both carbohydrates and an actual buildup of protein. So, as I stated in the fasting AMA, fasting is a great way to initiate apoptosis and autophagy. Right? In the case of apoptosis, we're talking about programmed cell death. In the case of autophagy, we're talking about cleaning out the old malfunctioning parts like working on a car. Right? Take the tire off, put a new tire on. Take the transmission out, put a new transmission in. Take the old malfunctioning parts of the cells, strip them down, flush them out, and rebuild new healthy cells. The ketogenic diet allows the body to clear out some of the protein gunk in the brain. Now, as for cancer, we know that cancer feeds on glucose. This is factual. right? So carbohydrate restriction is a no-brainer for starving out malignant cells, right? Everybody's, I just realized I'm getting real science-y. Is everybody still with me here? So uh, yeah, I know you guys always ask for science, but I'm going kind of quick. Um, but yeah, cancer, you can starve it out by a extreme restriction of glucose, which works incredibly well when partnered with traditional modalities such as chemotherapy to really rapidly reduce the cancer issue, right? So if everyone's still with me, again, this is all just my opinion. I believe that ketogenic diets are to be used as a therapeutic modality, not a daily way of life. 